Uh, my name is Greg Sanderson and I'm the president and operations manager here at Jetline Systems. Our company is pretty unique. Uh, what we do um, is basically focus around the flight simulator pilot, whether that be a home-based flight simulator pilot or um, a student pilot um, aspiring for certification to companies that do flight training. Um, so we really hit any any of those categories and then uh, basically we just focus on that customer and the need for that customer when it comes to computer technology. Um, it started back in 2000, actually the, the idea started when I was in the Air Force back in about 2003 um, to have a company, I wish there was a company that existed out there that I could call and talk to them about my flight simulator program. I was, I've been a flight simulator enthusiast for uh, more than half my life. My name is Kenneth McElheron and I'm the Vice President of Jetline Systems. When me and Greg got together, he was the pilot, I was the engineer. So basically what I handle here is I'm the guy that's doing all the special projects. Um, I do all the all the engineering, all the testing, um, and basically the engineering side of our business is much more than a computer company. Um, you now I've got three big projects going on right now, so I'll handle all the big special project engineering, testing um, for Jetline. And that's basically what I do uh, day to day. Uh, starting back in 1995, when I got my first. Microsoft Flight Simulator for Windows 95. That was where it all started. I saw a piece of software on a shelf at a bookstore. I looked at it. I said, I gotta have that, and now I need a computer. So I bought the software first, then I bought a computer. And uh, it just started from there. I was instantaneously hooked on it. I could not literally get enough of it. Um, and it started there. and. I'd always get computers and upgrade the computers and do as all, <laughs> all everything I could do as a young guy on my own. And uh, eventually, every time Flight Simulator released a new uh, program, every couple of years, I would get a new computer just to run that program. I could care really about anything else for a PC at that point. So before Jetline, I was working at a company, Altel, and basically. I moved up to Tampa out of high school to go to USF and uh, me and my wife both moved up here and I was working at Altel and uh, that was a cell phone company and um, I was doing computer science engineering and uh, uh, my wife was doing something else and uh, that's how I ended up here. Um, <clears throat> Greg had just got out of the Air Force and he had moved to Tampa and he got in touch with me he's like you are what I need. He's like, I've, I've, I'm a pilot, I'm in aviation, I got this. Um, but he needed some help with the technical side. And that's why we've meshed so well together. It was kind of funny at first, I didn't even want to come work here because, you know, Greg pulled me aside and tried to get me to go work for him. And, uh, you know, this is, a, we've been around eight years or 10 years. This is eight years ago. And basically, I was like, you know, I'm kind of going. To school to get a real job, not go you know work in a basement, and build a computer every now and again, and uh, then it just it it took off and evolved and and now it's a real thing. Um, so the the idea was uh, I was just a consumer, and I was trying to build computers myself and and talk to Dell and HP and all these other companies and, and get on the phone with a representative and I would tell them I'm just building this for Microsoft Flight Simulator and they would say well what you need is this and you need that and um, it, it turned out that really no one knew anything about the program. Um, the computer people knew about computers and the software people knew about software but there was very little there uh, that merged together where people were like, this is the computer that you need, we've tested it against the software, this is you know, the benefits of going to this part over this part. Um, it just didn't exist and it really still um, doesn't exist readily available today other than this company that I'm aware of. I know there's other companies that build flight simulator computers and, and the word flight simulator computer is 
there's no such thing as a flight simulator computer. There's a computer that runs flight simulator. Um, the hardware is hardware. That's just what it is. It's just boards and graphics cards and processors. So it's nothing that a you know a flight simulator computer is just a computer system designed to run flight simulator. That's all it is. It's just a theory. And um, the difference here is we put that theory to test. We actually test it out against that hardware and we compare them, we benchmark them. And that is what makes a flight simulator computer. It is just a computer, but it runs flight simulator really, really well, the best possible. Goldbergs, where uh, Barry makes up a game called Ball Ball that they play in the basement of their house. And so we made up a game called Wall Ball. And basically what it is, is a Nerf ball, such as this. This one has been slightly used. We also have an alternate that we keep right up here. And uh, the goal of the game is for the other person to not catch it, but you have to put it in the strike zone. Knees to head, cannot hit the walls, cannot hit the ground, cannot hit the ceiling. And uh, we play the seven. So if I throw and you, and you miss it and it's in the zone, then I get a point. It's like an incredibly easy. It's, it's, it's very. And the, the He's good, talking too much. The real sweet part of it is okay. right. the sweet part is you can adjust the rules on the fly, like any home-based game. You can only catch one. Okay. Like the words You can only catch. <laughs> <laughs> you can only catch with left-handed. Okay. Perfect. I catch with my left hand. For You're not left-handed. Yes. I pulled I up your stats. Okay, I catch with the left hand. Okay. Yeah, so you're already at an immediate disadvantage. Okay? That's well, it. This is how it goes. Now, it gets more heated as we go. And so, you try some trick pitches. Okay. And that's the, the with the Nerf ball, the, the whole thing with the Nerf ball is you can throw some, you know, great knuckle shots, maybe a little uh, slider action. <laughs> All right, so is there, a, is there a distance regulation? Am I in the right there spot? Is not, so. Here's, I mean, one of the rules is if... Uh, so I can keep it you, close to the wall like that. You can. That you counts. can ride the wall. Okay. If you touch the wall, no good. But if I, hit, if I hit it, say I'm trying to... It's coming in and it's close, and I hit it and then it hits the wall, then it's your point. And I don't catch it. Gotcha. If I let it hit the wall, obviously. But, uh, would you say it's got to be from head to knees? It is top of the head to the knees. The knees are in play, so if it hits you on the knee cap itself, that's a good shot. Got it. Okay? So then just go. One. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, oh, the breaking ball got him. Yeah. Okay. Dude, that's hard to catch. Two. <laughs> Too high. Alright. See how this works. Too low. Does it count if I go for it? And now, I, I, yeah, it's up to you to call it. It was, even though it was low like that, it's up to you to call it. If it, it it's in the zone, when you if you like hit it with your hand, it's right at your knee. No, it's probably a strike. I think so. So a typical day here at Jetline is, it's actually very different just because of the, the nature of the projects I'm working on. So like I said earlier, I do a lot of special projects. Right now is we, we do full sim design. So right now I'm working with two customers. Um, one guy has a full scale sim and we're going to do a multi-channel visual server for him. Uh, he's going to do the curved screen projection 180 degrees. Um, and it's actually the first time we're going to get to do the P3D Pro Plus, the new multi-channel. So what we're going to do for him is we're going to build out the, the visual and we're going to build it here. And we're going to test it with P3D Pro Plus, you know, in the previous we used Wide View. We're going to set up the projectors, we're going to make sure everything works, whichever way it works best. And we're going to try four different configurations because this is a brand new product. So we're going to try it with... Um, we're going to try it with the desktop graphics cards, the 1080s. We're going to try it with the Quadro cards, which is what P3D recommends because of a, a visual sync lock feature that those cards have. 
we're going to try it all in one big PC or we're going to try it across five PCs. Whatever configuration works the best is going to be what we implement into the sim. So we don't even have a, a, a price negotiated with the customer yet. But, you know, that's a new feature that came out and our business is doing these large scale visuals so we need to learn about it. So today, or this week, it's going to be building out a giant visual with the new P3D Pro Plus. Um, next week, it's going to be a different project. Um, next week's project is actually, we're building out, we've designed a sim for a guy, and he's doing a six degrees of freedom motion platform. Um, and we found one very cheap, around $20,000, which is very inexpensive for a six DOF platform. And he's also getting a force feedback chair on top of the motion platform. And he wants to, he wants to get the sway because he's a tail dragger uh, pilot. Um, so it, a lot of research, a lot of reading, um, <clears throat> contacting all these companies, getting all their engineering paperwork, see how it's all going to work together. And then we're going to sell him a turnkey simulator where I'll, I'll probably get the stuff shipped here, build it here, test it here learn how to implement and then ship it up to him and fly out there and build it. So, um, a typical day of Jetline is I'm engineering something, um, some type of simulation solution for a customer who simply just buys our PCs from us. Um, and then when we don't have big projects, it, who knows, getting coffee, I'm building a computer, uh, a lot of tech support phone calls, we do a lot of planned tech support. So a guy will buy a PC for me and he'll have you know, the entire side tech panel of all the gauges. And he wants to run it from a network PC with Active Sky on his network PC. So I'll set up a time with him when he buys his computer. When you get your computer, Thursday, one o'clock, I'm, I'm locked in. You got me for three hours. So I'll block out that time for my schedule. We'll remote in, we'll configure everything with the new PC. Um, he'll be flying, he'll be happy because it's probably the first time he's ever seen it working. Um, especially across two PCs makes a huge difference. Um, but a lot of plan tech support, because um, that's really the side that I handle. Um, you know, that same customer we plan tech support with Greg, where Greg teaches them how to use the FMC in the 737. Um, so it's just, it's everything in simulation on our end, since we're doing the home person, we don't have one product line that we sell. It's just completely different from day to day. Um, especially for me, since that's what I do, is the technical side of it. Um, you know, Paul builds all the computers, so he does kind of, of a more regimented day. You know, he's got his, he's got his build lists, he's got his computers, he's, you know, getting them all set up. Um, for me, it's different every day. So it all started out many years ago. Um, in, in 2003, I had the idea. In 2006, I made that idea a reality and started the company and it was uh, it was very much a challenge to um, try to brand a company directly for a program. I thought it was a good idea to just concentrate in one area, you know, just flight simulation, not gaming, not uh, all the other uses for computers, but just become an expert in one little sliver of it. And uh, it really has worked out because I wasn't the only one out there that just needed guidance on computers and software and how you make these flight programs run well. So what is that that you're shaping up? This is the thermal paste, just so it's, it's uh, this adds a layer between the cooler and the uh, processor. And I, I do go back and add oh, and just a, a thinner yeah. layer, a thinner layer in between it, because they just a lot of times these coolers will they'll, they'll add so much on there, so I'll actually add a layer to the uh, actual processor. Of course, this is directional.
thin layer. air, clean air through the radiator. And these fans are directional. The side that has the, uh, the protector here is pulling through. It has arrows on it as well. Yeah, arrows here. All right, you want to give me an extra set of hands here? Same man. Yep. Hold that in there. So I do this guy, directional. Air will be pulled through. Hold that guy. Got it? Okay. curved screen for a company that's a really big project um, there's no pre-done screen you have to do everything when you design a screen you have to design it you have to draw it in 3d send the proofs you have to model the projectors so you know exactly what placement everything is um, I mean it's there's there's a lot of work that goes into that the most difficult project was probably a home-built 737 and this guy did it professionally but he bought everything component by component from different people so flown out a lot of times to reconfigure things with the sim every job is so different has its own challenges and uh, i wouldn't say there's not one thing that sticks out um you know this guy before he buys it he wants to make sure everything works so it's just different every day and the, the projects are different one's not necessarily more challenging than the other they're just challenging in different ways either you are a person that are, is going to buy a computer solely for your flight simulator program or you're using it like for the family computer or work computer and it has to do many many functions other than just fly flight simulator um, so we simply talk to people and say, how are you using your computer? What do you have in mind? Tell me your idea about this new machine and what is it going to do? And uh, they say, well, I'm going to use it for you know, work. I'm going to use it for home. Kids can do homework on it. But really, 75% of the time, it's going to be my flight simulator or 25% of the time, it's going to be my flight simulator. Um, and then we can kind of look at uh, making sure that the computer is capable of running all of their applications. Um, and then you have the guys that are just guys and gals that are just flight simulator pilots and like, I'm going to run flight simulator on this and I got a little laptop doing those. So um, those are easier because we can just focus just on the program itself. And uh, usually there's, you know, budget constraints that need to be made. Um, 
And so we have to look at different components and how they are going to react to the software. Um, it's, it, it's, it makes our job easy when you just come in and say, I got $3,000 and build me a flight simulator. That's, that's very, very easy for us to do, but it, it's when you're working with you know, lower budgets um, or fixed budget and you're trying to squeeze every bit of performance in the program, um, that's what, it's, it's actually really fun for us to develop the computer and look at different component levels and where we should put this and where we should put that, um, you know, based on a certain fixed budget. Uh, tubes are there. It just, it, it, this radiator fits in this case better with the radiator on this side than on the other side. So we removed that one, but there's another tray here, another tray here. So we get, and another, you have wanted to add another SSD here. So plenty more room for hard drive space if needed. A lot of people know that Jetline's more than a computer company. It's not just, we're not just building computers and, and selling you a computer and we never talk to you again. We, we are an entire tech support team for your home sim. And these things can get very complex. Um, it's not uncommon for us to spend 10 hours with a customer right when they first get their machine and setting up their simulator. And basically, if it's flight simulation, we support it. If you're having trouble with Active Sky interjecting weather into your computer, we do it. Installing software, or you install software, um, you have 37 USB devices because you have a whole little home cockpit and five monitors. Um, it's actually relatively difficult to maintenance all that. And if you don't have the technology backing, it's, it's a lot of time. You know, it could take a guy six months to get his simulator where he wants it. Where from us, we'll get it working in one day. And if something goes wrong, you give us a call, we remote in, we take care of it. We're actually better equipped to take a you know, I want to network my SciTech gauges call, then I have a problem with my email. Sometimes when people call with computer problems, I'm lost. I'm like, oh, oh no, he call me back with a flight sim problem. <laughs> and, and back again, with, you know, me and Greg do the majority of the support. We've added a couple support people. Um, we've really got both sides of the cover. We've got the, the technology side and we've got the aviation side. Um, which is also very helpful in designing a sim. If you want to invest ten, twenty thousand dollars in a flight simulation and build out some sort of cockpit, um, you know our customers have us as that resource. And not only a resource to give them information, point them in the right direction, but also help them when they get stuck. And that's all from just buying a PC from us. You, you get all that with Jetline. Probably eighty percent of the flight simulator population is is running on a laptop or a, a spare computer somewhere. Um, they, you know, they don't always have the, the budget and the resources to just to have its own dedicated machine for it. They would love to do it, but they, they just simply can't get kids in college or whatever it may be. Um, so we just talked to them about how we can meet their, their needs um, at, you know, the computer's gonna last five or to eight years and um, you know, how they intend on using it, especially third party stuff. Third party stuff is, is more critical because um, we're trying to create that experience. They're coming to us because they've run out of resources somewhere else. Um, you know, they've been on the forums, they ask tons of questions, and forums are a great place to get information, but you just don't know how valuable, you know, that information, it's opinion most of the time. Um, it's just one person's opinion or their experience with something. Um, but you don't know if you're talking to an expert, you're talking to someone that just created their uh, forum credentials three hours ago and they're just on there. So it's, it's really tough to get you know, good, solid information from the forums. Um, with us, we have tested it. We've just done it. Um, we will do testing. If you, if you have something, an, an idea, and you just need to know it, if this is work, will this work this way, and how well will it work this way? Uh, we can just simply, you know, run a test and find out how it's going to work. With you know, x amount of graphics cards, how many screens are you going to use? Um, you know, we have a computer engineer that will figure all that out and uh, and come up with a recommendation. So 
our customer base is, uh, even though it is fairly small in terms of, um, you know, global gaming, which I guess a lot of flight simulators kind of, it's kind of just automatically thrown into that and it totally couldn't be uh, in its own world uh, more because flight simulator and PC gaming are just not the same thing. They're just, are not even close. I've never, I've been playing flight simulator for 21 years. I've never beat it yet. So it's just a perpetual thing that just goes on and on and on. And you're always learning. It's really more of a tool than it is a game and um, and it operates drastically different from a PC game. Just in the internal mechanism to the software is highly different from PC games. You know, the real the benefit of the side panel is not really, I mean, it's nice to be able to look inside and see all the components, but there's a fault indicator LED inside. And if any time years from now you ever have a problem on power up, it's going to give you a fault code in, inside yeah. on the LED. You can just, we can look that up and find out what's stopping it oh, from starting. If it's a, a, it's a two problem, digit digital code, if it's digital memory, number. graphics, you know, whatever it is, it's a little two digit index code. It allows us to figure out what's causing the problem. And the different codes are right here in the manual. So you can look it up right from yeah, you don't even have to take the You don't even have to you know, take the cover off to find that information out. It just gives a call, tell us what the code is, and we look it up. Whether it be power, yeah, not unplugged or not reading the hard the hard drive. Our customer, our customer base is, um, it's it's really one build off the, one has built off the other one. So our um, our initial focus when we started out was uh, we were going after typically the frustrated flight simulator pilot. That was the person that would call us. They have tried everything and they're getting nowhere. They're seeing videos online. They're, they have friends that are running the program and they're like, this is working great. I've tried everything I could think of. I've tried every tweak, every turning off services and I've, I've done everything within my, my power and I cannot get it to run the way I feel it should. Um, whether they built it themselves or they, you know, get a box computer or something. Um, we get a lot of that. Um, they've tried it all and they're, they know it's possible. They see the videos. They know people that are, you know, running and it's realistic, you know, for them. They, they're just like, I can't, I would love to achieve that. We have that. That's, that's 50% of our, our customer base, like almost. And um, that kind of, you know, we have, then there's a, the section that are just, a big part of it is repeat business for us because we've done so many machines out there that are still running today and we'll get customers, they call them, they're like, oh, I bought a computer from you six years ago. Uh, it is the best machine ever. We just, every single day I get this email. It's just the best machine. It ran, it has ran, it's still running. I'm running a flight simulator on it. I'm limited now because of third party, third party uh, software. I want to run this and, and Orbix and Rex. Um, and it starts to, just because of the technology, the age of the technology, it's, you know, we're, we're kind of limited with six year old technology and how to run that really well. They know that it's possible to do. So then we'll just build them a new machine. We'll tell them, this is where you are now. This is where you can be with a new machine in terms of performance and what you want to run and how it really runs. Um, you know, we could just fire up a demo and, and have, you know, and try it. So, um, I'm, I'm a big flight simulator guy. I mean, I'm, I'm here all day doing it and, uh, I'm home for four hours a night. I can't wait to get out of here so I can do more of it. I'm going right home to get on my sim. Um, so I run a, a, an awful lot of software. Um, I'm exposed to tons of different uh, tons of different environments. I'm not just you know just airline stuff. It might be this week. I might be you know into more of the heavy long haul. And by the weekend, I'm in helicopters. <laughs> and next week, I'll be in you know into the light aircraft and just wanting to put around the you know Pacific Northwest, going from hop to hop. 
So I really like it all. There's not just one thing that I, everybody's different, but uh, I kind of like it all. I always really have. Um, so our customers kind of either come to us for the first time frustrated that they're not getting the performance that they feel they, they should be, um, or they've been with us for years and ready to upgrade. Um, and then the other half of it is companies that come to us because they are doing simulation training for a company and they have the exact same need as the home-based flight sim guy. Um, they want it to run well, they think they can, and they have so, so many resources available in their project and they're, they're kind of running out of space here to, to make it run well. And uh, they, they need the expertise as well. Um, they may be doing it all day, but they, they still have, they want to have that reach back capability to come back to somebody and say, this is what we're trying to do. What's the best way of pulling this off? Oh, we tried this configuration and this configuration. Should we go with a network solution? You know, what kind of third party uh, development is out there to enhance this environment, uh, et cetera. So they really do have the exact same need, just in a different, different way. Uh, and that pretty much makes up their entire customer base right there. Um, our goal is um, that our customers um, they are having an experience they can't get elsewhere. That they're they're happy, and we're you know we're providing that, that service and that equipment uh, to the customer, and they they're happy with what we're doing. If they have questions, they feel comfortable with us asking you know the the questions that they have. You know they, they don't feel that there's a stupid question um, because it, I mean I know it's cliche, but there really isn't a stupid question. Um, you don't know until you know, and um, we're constantly learning ourselves. Uh, we're better this year than we were last year. Next year we're going to be better than we are this year. Um, but really, it, it all boils down to uh, customer satisfaction. It's always has been that way. We've always conducted our business focused on on our customer and doing absolutely what's best for them. We absolutely are sure that once we take care of that customer, they will be back. They are coming back. Um, that has always been uh, a key element to our business um, because we are relatively small in the computer industry. We are we're a spec, and uh, we know we can do it better. We're always trying to get better, um, but we really push ourselves to to be better every single every single month or every single release of a new product, um, we're always pushing ourselves to, to do it better than the, the next guy. And um, that's always been our focus and I, I, I can't see that ever changing. The game is on. The declaration has started. Prepare the arena for battle. Okay, here we go. Right out to hit DeAndre's. I'm going to try not to hit 30,000 right now. Yes, that's not good. I'll try to get my kids or something. It's not safe to have that thing here. Yeah, probably not. Greg cheats. He uses that side of the hall to his advantage. He just swats stuff out of the sky and then That's because he got shut out of the No, that's what he does. Uses his own field to his advantage. Part of, oh nice. You know, part of building a good simulator computer is getting loose during the construction phase. So this helps us. Oh, two. See, it's good. Keeps the fingers. Keeps the fingers moving. Oh. oh. See, there's there's no speed game. Three. You know what? All right, here it comes now. The jump, bring the jump. Oh, see, that would have been bad if the camera was right there. Oh, face is changed. Paul's face like this. Oh yeah, we're we're live. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> the reason that we use a sticker and not some other type of decal or or, or some sort of plastic thing on there that to brand it. Um, and the biggest reason is, you know, with the sticker, once you get it home and your friends come over, these things can easily come off and now you build it yourself. If there's anything that you would want anyone to know about Jetline Systems, what would it be? Um, I think that uh, we have their best interest in mind. Um, it, every company is going to tell you that. No one's going to say they don't. But there, you know, people will have experiences uh, on the entire globe that are, are they don't feel that the you know the people that are working for them are that truly do have their best interests in mind. And uh, I think that we have proven over 10 years that we truly do. Um, I think a lot of times people, they think they need to have a $5,000, $6,000 computer to, to run Flight Simulator or prepare or explain or whatever it is. Um, to, you know, just throw tons of money at it and that will give them the best experience. And, I'll tell you, it's not always the case. It really depends if you're into big time, if you're a big time gamer or you do CAD design, that may be the case if you have, you know, applications that require that. Um, but it's not always the case with, like, say, P3D. We have certain criteria that we need to make it run really, really well. And um, we will push that. We're not trying to, you know, but we, every single day we get someone that has a budget and they're like, well, I just, this is all I'm trying to do. And we're like, well, we can do that and we don't necessarily need to spend 4,800 hours to do it. This is what we need to pull that off. If you want to change a certain part, this is a benefit here, but you may not see any benefit in the simulator. A lot of times you, you may not, depending on the part that you want to upgrade, um, you may not see benefit at all in the simulator. It may be totally a future proof future-proof system, you know, for next year, or, you know, new content that's coming out. But um, I think we're very transparent with our customers and what is going to work for them now, where they see their their software and their, their simulator growing into in the future. We, we try to provide as much information to the consumer so they know exactly what to expect now, where it's going in the, in the future, and, and the reason we would recommend those those upgrades or different components. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing though, is we do have their interest in mind and we know that they're gonna be a customer uh, for 20 years or 30 years, they're, they're gonna be around. Um, they know they can trust us to make that call for them. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I, I would like, you know, consumers to know about what Chetline Systems uh, focuses on. It is nice to know exactly what's going on with it. Oh, and that's game, boys. Hey, keep going. This for who won? Oh, I did seven to two. Well, to be honest, I didn't give him my best because I was concerned about hitting the camera. Oh. <laughs> that was good.